So that was all really abstract and flowery and algebraic. You need to see it with some actual numbers, okay? So this one I've just pulled out. It's literally, I think, the first question from your exercise. Similar kind of setup from what you've seen before. Now you're so used to things like, say, Pythagoras. Pythagoras is old hat for you guys. You've been doing it so long that when you see this, you almost involuntarily work out what the last length is. And you're like, oh, I know. I can do this, this, square, that, square, and then you can work out your final length. Okay? Now, in just the same way, you have some unknowns here, and you can use the surrounding information to find it out. Here's the key. Remember, remember we've been saying it's really important that you name things properly and that you pay attention to those names, right? So for example, um, that A, B, sine C thing, you've got to know that this angle is opposite which side? It's whichever side you've labeled little c. Okay. Now in the same way here, when you look at all of these guys here, right? these are named very purposefully. So when you want an angle, you've got to match it to its opposite side, yeah? And when you want this angle, which is a, be a different one, you need to match it to its opposite side. So if you have another colour there, have a look, and can you see which sides match with which angles? In fact, I need another colour. This will do. Okay? So for example, can you see 10.6 uh, matches with 38? You see it there? They are opposite each other. And in a similar way, the unknown you're after, the x, is opposite the, opposite the 21, okay? Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna use this pairing, x and 21 degrees, 10.6 and 38 degrees, I'm gonna use it with this to work out my unknown. Now underneath where you've written this, I want you to write one more thing underneath, but it's still the sign rule, but sometimes you'll see it upside down, like this. Yeah. Don't weed yourself out too much. Okay. Now, as we become clear in a second, this form will be more useful for this question. And as we're solving it, I wonder if the colleagues can turn and you can work out why I prefer this one to that one, even though they're really saying the same thing. Okay. So, yeah, you have to think about it. Don't spoil it just yet. Sorry. That's okay. I'm just going to use two parts of this. You can use three, depending on the question, but I only need two. So I need a length and its opposite angle. I'm going to start with the one I don't know. That's x and its opposite angle, which is 21 degrees. Now, this is the sine rule, so I'm going to say sine 21 degrees. So that's the first part over here. I've slotted the length where it belongs and the opposite angle. What's it equal to? X. Okay, I've got, I've got a length on an angle, so I'm going to go another length on sine of the other angle. Are you following so far? Which is 38 degrees. Okay. Now you set it up, you slotted everything in place. I just want x by itself, so I should multiply through by sine 21 degrees. So that leaves me with this. And that's just fodder for your calculator. No more mental calculation required. Can someone reach for theirs and give me maybe, um, we've got one decimal place here, can I get one decimal place from someone once they've punched it in? Yeah, anyone? That's fine. You can get there first. Okay, so once you finish that, I want you to put your pens down and let's just discuss two quick pointers about this, okay? Number one, I always ask you guys when you're measuring something, do a sense check, okay? Now, you can actually do a super powered sense check on this and I'll show you how, right? Firstly, six centimeters, do you think it's okay? I think it's okay, looks roughly all right. But you can do better than that. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to stick out your two arms in front of you, not too wide, so you don't hit the people beside you. And what I want you to imagine is the two arms you have are like two lengths in a triangle, 
Okay, two legs in a triangle. Now, here's what I want you to think. If you've got your two hands in front of you, right, you've got an angle where you are, right? Do you see you're forming an angle where you are? Yes? Now, I want you to think about what's the size of the angle you've got right now. Okay, like, I don't know, mine's like, well, that's, a, that's 90 degrees right there. So if you go half, that's like 45. Think about whatever the size of that is. Now, not only do you have an angle where you are, but opposite you, between your hands, you've got a side. Can you like visualize that there's a side going in between your hands? You see it? Okay, now think about this. As the angle where you are gets bigger, what happens to the length of the side? They both change, and importantly, as the angle gets bigger, the side also gets bigger. Does that make sense? Like look, here's like a little angle and a little side in between my hands. And here's a big angle and a really big side. Do you agree? Now come back to our triangle. I'll come to your question in a second. See these angles here? Have a look. See how this angle is smaller than this angle? Do you see it? So therefore, this side must be smaller than this side. Because if you make a smaller angle, that forces a smaller side, just like your arms did. Does, does that make sense? And this, like you said, is smaller. Okay. Yeah, Eliza's going to have the biggest one in the class, obviously. Sandy, you had a question. Yeah, but just because, like, like the angle can change, mm -hmm. but, like, the sides aren't going to get longer. The side that you're making between, yeah, this one, right? Okay. Um, last thing I want to point out is a question Jess asked me, which I posed to you all at the beginning. Remember I said to you, uh, two different versions of the sign. There's the one I wrote down, the one we all wrote down over there, and then there's this one which is upside down. Okay. Now, what would have happened had I used that version? I wouldn't get the wrong answer, but just watch, just watch. All the numbers are the same, it's just going to look like this. Uh, there's the sign whatever on this, and then there's the sign of the other angle on this. Now, it's still going to give you the right answer, but do you see why I'm trying to avoid it? Because look, the x that I want, he's down there on the bottom, right? I don't want him there, that's icky. I guess the first thing I would do is turn everything upside down, but that just lands you here. So you might as well just kind of go straight there. Okay? Sir, yes. how do you know to put this in the sign 21? You couldn't have asked for a better question. How do you decide which one to use? Do you use this one or this one? What were you trying to find in this question? What was the unknown? It was a side. It was a length, right? So therefore, make the length, the thing you're trying to find, put it front and center, right at the top. Use whichever form will put the thing you want up there. If I were trying to find an angle, which we're going to look at later, I would not use this form. I would use this form, do you see it? Because the angle is exactly where I want it. Does that make sense? Okay.